Good morning. Thank you for joining Southview Church today for our worship gathering. Welcome, church family and friends from all over. Uh, it's, a, it's a joy to have you today. Uh, today we're coming to you from the, the, the Warrior's Path Lake. I'm standing on the shoreline of this beautiful place. Uh, you can see the water behind me, and it's, it's another beautiful day that God has given us. Uh, we're blessed, aren't we? Um, you know, so much of Jesus' ministry took place near a sea, in a sea, and near a sea, the Sea of Galilee. Oh, it was there, that in that area, that region, and on that sea where Jesus healed people. Uh, we have the great story of how he calmed the storm on that sea. That area was also where he came and, and called his disciples. A lot of his disciples were from that area. And a number of them were commercial fishermen. And Jesus came, the Son of God, came along that sea, came to that sea, to that region, and called their names, saved their souls, and called them to follow him and to do his will. Oh, yes, yeah, so much happened near the Sea of Galilee. Well, today, as we are gathered here, gathered uh, along the shoreline of Warriors Path Park, I pray that you today will hear the voice of Jesus echoing down through the centuries, calling your name, calling your name in the songs that we sing, calling your name through the message, that His Spirit will whisper your name today, and that you will hear His voice, that you will follow Him, that you will come to know Him in a personal relationship, and that you will follow Him and live your life for Him. I pray that happens today. Be blessed today from the day's service. I hope you will be blessed. Let's pray. Father God, thank you today for another day. Your mercies are new every morning. Thank you for letting us come worship your son this morning. Jesus, you've told us for two or three gather in your name. You'll be in the midst thereof. You're with us today because you will not be limited by time or space. You are with us in these Facebook gatherings or YouTube or whatever social media platform we are using. You are with us because we are gathered in your name. I pray today that all glory and honor will go to you, Jesus. Now, Father God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, let us lift high the name of your Son, Jesus. Because your Son has told us if he'll be lifted up, he'll draw all people to him. May it be so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
It's hard to believe that Easter was three weeks ago. Um, that Easter is now in the rear view mirror of life. But the good news today is, is that, that we can live in the power of the risen Christ. Yes, Jesus rose from the dead 2,000 years ago. But as Jeremy Kent has stated in his song, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can live in us. Boy, that's the good news three weeks after we celebrated Easter Sunday. You know, because Jesus is alive, we can go from sin to being born again. <laughs> and when we fall or fail again and again, we know the Lord's going to pick us up just like he did Peter. Yeah, that's what happened in the life of that famous disciple of Jesus we're gathered on the shores of Warrior's Path Lake today. It's a beautiful day. But I want to take you, as God leads us, to another body of water, to the Sea of Galilee. I want God's Spirit to take us there, <laughs> to that place where Jesus changed so many lives, to the place he called his disciples. And I pray today that the same voice that spoke with the Sea of Galilee some 2,000 years ago will resonate across the centuries. And today you'll hear the voice of Jesus, the risen Savior, as His Spirit brings His voice to you, calling your name today. You know, Peter, um, a few days earlier, he had denied he even knew Jesus. Three times he, den he denied he knew Jesus. In the face of fear, with people trying to say, you're one of Jesus' disciples, he denied him. I guess you could say he had three strikes. <laughs> you know, using a baseball analogy, three strikes and you're out. Oh, but the story of Jesus and Peter reminds us that with Jesus, three strikes never means that you're out. I want to call your attention today to a powerful passage of Scripture. Once again, Jesus had, de Jesus had been denied by Peter on three occasions. Jesus had already appeared to them 
after he died and rose from the dead on two occasions. And he's about to appear to, again, to them a third time. And he comes to the Sea of Galilee looking for his disciples, but one in particular, Peter, who thinks he's struck out. <laughs> That's the one that Jesus comes looking for. Let me set the stage for you with the scripture. The disciples have fished all night and they've caught nothing. And I want to call your attention to John 21 today. When the sun came up, Jesus was standing on the beach. But they didn't recognize him. Jesus spoke to them, friends, have you any fish? They answered, no. And he said, throw the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. And they did what he said. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple Jesus loved, John, said to Peter, it's the master. When Peter realized it was the master, he threw on some clothes for he had stripped for work and he dove into the sea. The others followed in a boat. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you just caught. So Peter climbed back into the boat and drugged the net, filled with 153 fish to shore. Even with so many fish, the net was not torn. And then Jesus said, come, let's have breakfast together. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him that. And Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things, you know that I love you. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Peter, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will, will dress you and lead you to where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Lord God, will you just take your word today and touch each of our hearts and begin with me. Lord, it's just a wonderful truth to know that because your son's alive, three strikes never means we're out. Because of his great grace, because he is alive today, we're so grateful for this wonderful truth. And may every word is said today bring glory to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, the COVID-19 um, situation has impacted our lives in many ways. Even one of our favorite pastimes you know, baseball. The baseball season's been canceled or suspended indefinitely. We all love baseball. That's so American. Um, you know, I'm thinking about baseball today. I played baseball. Yours truly played Little League. And then I played Babe Ruth baseball. And, um, and um, I played the position of right bench, if I may. And from that position, I set a record. Most hot dogs ever eaten in a single game. Oh, yes, I played baseball. I wasn't very good at it. But we all love baseball. But I want to tell you maybe a fact that you don't know. Most have heard of Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth once held the home run record. He had 714 home runs. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. He also struck out over 1,300 times. You know, Peter must have felt like he struck out that first, that first Easter season. He had denied Jesus three times. But on Galilee's shore, he discovered the first truth that I want to tell you today, that the risen Lord has confidence in us. Let me make it more specific. The risen Lord believes in you, and he believes in me. He believes in us in spite of our sins and failures. This is good news for the one who follows Christ, the believer, and it's great news for the unbeliever. We see it in Peter's life. We see it in this story I just read to you today, and we also see it in the counter that Jesus had with Peter three years earlier. In both cases, Jesus didn't wait for Peter to find him. He came to Peter. He went looking for, for Peter. In their first meeting, Jesus found Peter on the Sea of Galilee, same setting. He found him cleaning his empty and dirty nets. He had fished all night. He hadn't caught a thing. Huh. 
Jesus connects with Peter that first time by asking him, can I use your boat to speak the word to the people from? Can I use your boat as a pulpit? <laughs> Peter agreed. After his message, Jesus said, Peter, can we put the boat out into the deep water? And will you put the net down? Put the net down for, into the deep water for, for a catch. And, and Peter said, Master, you know, I fished all night. We've cleaned our nets. I'm tired. I want to go home. But he had just a little ounce of faith. And he said to Jesus, because you've said so, I'll put the net back in the water. <laughs> and you know what the result was. We know it. Jesus, creator of the universe. The Bible says that all things were made by him and for him. And he was there with Almighty God, the creator. Jesus sent the fish, a multitude of fish, into Peter's nets. Listen to Peter's response to this miracle. When Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I am such a sinful man. We read that in Luke 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 8. And that day, Peter confesses his sin before Jesus. He puts his faith in him. He's converted. He, he comes to faith in Christ. He's saved. Oh, what a, what a great day. But it happened because Jesus believed in him. He saw Peter for who he was and for who he could be. He knew he was a sheep that was lost, that needed salvation, that needed to be found. But he knew Peter could be something special because of his great grace. He believed in Jesus. Well, Peter believed in Jesus, but Jesus believed in him first of who he was and what he could be. Today, if you don't know Christ or you've walked away from him, Jesus believes in you. And as with Peter, he can fill your empty nets. He can fill your life, that is, and your soul like no other. Furthermore, oh, it's the words of Jeremiah 11. He has a plan for your life. And for those who maybe follow Christ, you were a follower, maybe like John, James, or Peter, but you failed Jesus. Maybe you failed him recently. He still believes in you. <laughs> Peter had denied Jesus left him on his own, but Jesus would not leave Peter alone. <laughs> he came again to Galilee's shores and replaced Peter's great mistake with his greater grace. Oh, he believes in us today. This is good news, but it leads to another truth of how God's greater grace came and, and, and forgave Jesus, not forgave Jesus, forgave Peter for his great miracle. It's the second truth I want to tell you today. With the risen Lord, we can start all over. What do you mean? Well, let me make it simple. We can begin again. Wow. When Simon Peter realized that it was the master, he threw on some clothes for he was stripped for work, and he dove into the sea. After breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? You know, realizing it's Jesus, Peter can't wait for the boat to get to shore. He jumps in. While he doesn't know what Jesus will say to him or what he will say, Jesus knows his heart, and Peter knows Jesus' heart. For three years, he's watched Jesus extend grace to those whose faith is wobbly or faith who have wobbly faith. I'm waving to some great folks over here. For three years, Peter has watched Jesus. He's watched his big heart towards people. I don't know, but maybe, maybe Peter thinks of the day the father came to Jesus with his demon-possessed son. It's one of my favorite passages. We read it in Mark 9. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has your son been like this? From childhood, the father answered. It has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, Jesus, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus. And I'm waving at another precious lady. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes, Jesus said to the father. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Peter undoubtedly remembered that father and his wobbly faith and his lack of faith. He remembers him coming to Jesus with fear and his faith is very low. But you know what Jesus did? The word says he healed that, that boy. He cast out all the demons. 
on the Sea of Galilee in the day he said, and perhaps Peter thinks about the night he denied Christ. You know he's thinking about it. He thinks of how fear overcame his faith. He thinks about how he let Jesus down, how he failed. He remembers other times his faith failed. He remembers the time he said to Jesus, if it's you, let me walk on water. And Jesus said, come to me, Peter. But when he quit looking to Jesus, he failed. He failed then. But Jesus, with great grace, reached down and picked him up. Friends, our sins and failures are ultimately a result of a lapse or failure in our faith. But the good news today is that Jesus gives us grace to begin again. We just simply need to look to Him. It's that song we sing sometimes, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full of His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. As Peter makes his way to shore, he does so by faith. Believing Jesus is not done with him. Surely the one who believed in him and saved him and called him to follow him and become a fisher of men will allow him to begin again. I'm waving to some more people. I'm, I'm delivering a message on video. God bless y'all. Peter makes his way to shore. He has faith just a little bit. Jesus will, 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 will believe in him again, will allow him to begin again. And his faith and hope reignites. When Jesus said, Peter, let's, let's get off to the side. And after, after breakfast, uh, Jesus says to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Huh. Oh, the great grace of the risen Savior who believes in us, has confidence in us, and, and, and he allows us to begin again. Ask the power of the risen Savior. Ask me know what, how I know why, because that's my life. It can be your life today. You know, Jesus asked Peter three times if he loved him. Now, Peter had denied Jesus three times. It wasn't meant to rub it in. Jesus wasn't trying to rub his failure into his face. I love the way Ken Geyer, how he writes of this encounter between Jesus and Peter. Oh, it's so beautiful. Let me read it to you. After the meal, Jesus takes Peter aside. What he says is remarkable. What he doesn't say is even more so. He doesn't say, some friend you turned out to be. I'm really disappointed in you, Peter. You let me down. You're all talk. You're a coward. Boy, was I ever wrong about you. And you call yourself a disciple. No. The risen Savior who believes in Peter and believes in us, who by his grace allows us to begin again. No, he didn't, he didn't say those things. Instead, he asked simply, King God writes, he asked simply, do you love me? He asked three times, once for each denial, oh, not to rub it in, but to give Peter an opportunity to openly confess his love, something Peter desperately needs to verbalize. By the third time Jesus asked him, Peter gets the connection, and a flame leaps from the smoldering memory, and it burns. But Jesus is not there to inflict pain. He's there to relieve it. Jesus has seen his bitter tears when the rooster crowed. That was all he needed to see. You see, Jesus told Peter, before the rooster crows twice, you'll, 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 you'll deny you even know me three times. And Peter wept bitterly when he, when, when he thought he had, when he knew he denied his Jesus. But Jesus has seen those bitter tears. That was all he needed to see. That was repentance enough. Peter looks up long for the faintest glimmer of forgiveness. And in a language beyond words, in a language of love, it glows from the Savior's eyes. Wow. We could celebrate Resurrection Sunday every Sunday and every day for that matter. Because Jesus is alive. And the risen Savior and Lord, <coughs> He believes in you. He believes in me. And by grace, He saves us. And when we put our belief in Him, we can come to know Him. But then as we walk with Him, and if we fall or fail or make a mistake, He's there to pick us up. 
His grace, let's just begin again. Oh, this is a relevant message for all of life. It's the good news today. You know, Jesus asked Peter three times, do you love me? Now, I, 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 King Geyer said he did it so that Peter could verbalize his answer. I think that's true. But I also think he asked the question three times because he knew what was going to happen that day. And he knew Peter's future. Ultimately, Peter knew, or Jesus knew, that Peter would be like him and become like him by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can be like Jesus and we become what he desires for us. That's good news today. Do you love me more than these? Jesus asked Peter. He asked him three times and he gave him three very similar answers. Peter would say, yes, you know I love you, Lord. But Jesus always had the same response. Feed my lambs. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Wow. By the Spirit's power, Peter would be like Jesus. In fact, he would go from being a fisherman to a fisher of men. He would go from being, uh, being one who, who takes care of the fish to one who takes care of sheep. <laughs> People. He would be like Jesus in that he'd be a man full of faith, full of hope, full of peace, full of love, and full of power. He would be like Jesus in that he would possess a shepherd's heart. He would be a man of God after his Savior who lays down his life, who laid down his life for the sheep. And he would be like Jesus who came and said, I came to do my Father's will. I came to seek and save that which was lost. I came for my Father's kingdom. And Peter would embrace the words of Jesus from Matthew 6.33. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. He would walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Yes, Jesus knows we can be like Him but become like Him. And finally today, ultimately, Peter would be like Jesus. And he'd become what Jesus would desire by following so close in his footsteps. It's the last verse today, and I've got, I want to read you one final thing. The last verse I'm going to share. Jesus said to Peter after he said, Feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, feed my sheep. Jesus said, Peter, very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out, stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you don't want to go. Peter, follow me. Follow me. Oh, man. Oh, the power of the risen Savior. I can't get over how he believes in us. Thank you, Jesus. How he lets us begin again when we fall and fail. He doesn't beat us up. He picks us up. And how the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can lead us to be like Jesus and to become what He desires. Today, I, we've come down here to record this message. We're coming to you from the, from the lake. There's been some distractions. People going by, boats going by, dogs barking. I don't know how many settings we had to try to try to just to, to get this done for you today, to bring this to you this morning. But there was nothing going to stop me from delivering this news because I know the risen Savior. I know what He could do in our lives because He believed in me. He's allowed me to begin again so many times. And anything I am in this life is because of His great power that allows me to be like Him and become what He desires for me. You can know that truth today. Let me read you the final thing I wanted to read you today, once again from Ken Geyer. The intimate moment between Peter and Jesus proved to be the turning point in Peter's life. Within seven weeks, he would preach the boldest sermon of his life. He would be in Jerusalem, the place of hatred where people hated Jesus. 3,000 would come to know Jesus. 3,000 would be saved. They would form the nucleus of the church he would establish there. 
Later, he would stand before Caiaphas himself. Oh, the chief priest, the one who made sure Jesus was crucified. He stand before him and the entire ruling council that had conspired against Jesus. He would stand up to them in a bold confession for his Savior. And he would go on preaching about his crucified Lord, shaking the foundations of the temple and sending a tremor to rock even the mighty pillars of the Roman Empire. Finally, as Jesus said, he would be crucified. One historian tells us that when they were putting Peter on the cross, he has to be crucified upside down. For he didn't feel worthy to die in the same manner his Lord had. What kind of friend inspires, inspires devotion like that? A friend not like no other. A friend who prayed for him when he was weak and picked him up when he was down. A friend who forgave him when he failed. A friend who healed a painful memory. A friend who loved him. A friend who believed in him. A friend like Jesus. I don't know where you are today in your life. I got news for you. The risen Lord, he believes in you. He'll take you right where you are. But you don't know what the things I've done. You don't know how far I've run from God. He'll take you. He believes in you. He's the father in Luke 15 who welcomes the prodigal son back. The prodigal son came back. He had wasted his father's inheritance, half of it. He smelt like a hog pen. And the father believed in him. Jesus believes in you today. If, if you've kind of been up and down in your walk with the Lord, believe us, you believer. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, him, there, there are no strikeouts. Oh, no strikeouts. You can begin again. And finally today, by the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, through the power of the risen Christ, you can be like Jesus. And you, be, you can become like him. You can be what he wants you to be. And you can become what he desires for your life. Pray with me today. Father God, today we just want to thank you for your word. God, you know that for many of us ministers preaching before a camera, it's, it's a struggle. But Lord, today I felt your presence along the shores of the shoreline of Warrior's Path Lake. Even though we had all the distractions. Oh, I recognize the enemy fight me today. But Lord, the good news today is that your son's alive. And Lord, today there's somebody out there who needed to hear today. They needed to hear the good news that you believe in them. That if, you, if they'll just put their belief in you, it'll turn their lives around. Or one that's fallen recently, maybe committed a sin or had a bad attitude. Oh, your grace can let them begin again. You just pick them right back up. When we get out of step, Lord, you just tell us to skip. Like when I was in the marching band. When you get out of step, just skip. Oh, thank God you allow for skips. Thank you, God. And Lord, by your great grace and the power of the risen Savior, I can be and become. Oh, be like you, Jesus, and become what you'd have me to be. And so can every person that hears this message. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.
Lord, I'm amazed by how you love me. Oh, without a doubt, Peter. Oh, he was he was just thinking that it was it was overwhelming his heart uh, the day that Jesus showed up and showed him that he believed in him, that he could begin again, that he could be and become what Jesus had in mind for his life. We're so glad you joined us today, um, and we do hope you've been blessed. Uh, for our Southview Church family, you're probably wondering, well, when are we going to get back together? When are we going to gather in our building again? Well, I don't have an answer for you. I can tell you this. Uh, your leadership, your, your board, and your staff met this week uh, via, via Zoom. Thank God for technology. And um, we're praying. We just need you to pray. We need God's wisdom. We set a tentative date, but I don't want to give you that because I, I'm not so sure that's going to happen. Um, but... Um, just continue to pray in, in God's time, and we'll get back together. In the meantime, we're going to continue uh, meeting on Facebook Live and on YouTube, and uh, we hope you'll continue to join us. In fact, uh, even when we get back to our building, uh, we're going to continue a focus 
on these um, these gatherings that happen on social media, um, we we are learning just how God has used this method of, of communication and ministry, and we're looking to enhance it. We want to improve not only on our our meetings that we have in person, but on these meetings that we're putting on video out on social media. We've already begun working on these enhancements. So once again, our, our church family, let's be patient. Let's trust God. Let's, uh, let's continue to worship Him in these meetings. Uh, we're so glad you joined us today. If you need to contact our church, um, our email address is southviewcommunitychurch at gmail.com. You can send us a, a, a message on um, Facebook Messenger uh, to Southview Church. Or if you want to contact me directly, send me a message on Instant Messenger at Billy J. Willis. You can also email me at Pastor Bill Willis at gmail.com. We love you today. God loves you. Have a blessed day. If God could be for you, who could be against you? God bless. Bye-bye.